Hey everyone, you know we build national monuments to commemorate, to celebrate, and to remember people and past events. National monuments are some of the most visited places on the planet. And while they are built for public viewing, not everything about some national monuments is public knowledge. Some national monuments have secret rooms, restricted hidden areas, and even entire floors cut off from the rest of the world. There's more than meets the eye for the monuments in today's video, so let's begin this thing. Here are 15 amazing secrets hidden inside national monuments. Number 15. 103rd Floor of the Empire State Building the Empire State Building, although not a national monument, is a highly visited building. And considering the unparalleled views this building offers, it's no wonder people flock to the Empire State Building to snap a selfie on the top floor. But unknown to many, the public top floor of the Empire State Building is not technically the top floor. There's a secret floor above the public top floor, so the building actually has 103 floors. The 103rd floor is open air, and the only protection visitors have from a perilous plunge is a small ledge and a low railing. The publicly accessed floors have a lot of safeguards in place to protect people and to ensure that no one falls. This is not the case with the secret top floor. With very little between you, yourself, and the edge of the ledge, even a strong wind could make visitors second-guess their decision to be there. Needless to say, it's not a safe option to open this floor to the public. Currently, it's just really celebrities and other assorted important people who are granted access to this dizzying floor. Some might feel that the view alone would be worth the risk. Some might strongly disagree. It really doesn't matter, though, because for most of us, visiting the true top floor of the Empire State Building is not a privilege we'll ever be granted. Number 14. The Room Beneath the Lincoln Memorial The Lincoln Memorial was built to commemorate America's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. The memorial is relatively simple in design, composed mostly of marble and limestone. But the monument has seen some pretty dramatic and major events in American history, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. The monument is no stranger to secrets, or maybe conspiracy theories is a more accurate description. There's the face that's supposedly carved into Lincoln's hair. There's the myth about Lincoln's hands are making a sign language symbol for the initials A and L. There's also talk that Lincoln is buried under the memorial, or that the number of steps on the memorial is significant. These rumors have all been proven false. But if you've heard rumors of a secret room beneath the memorial, well, those rumors are actually true. There's a large cavernous area underneath the memorial. It's got dirt floors and concrete walls. The ceiling is laden with hundreds of stalactite formations that continue to grow as water drips through the monument. There's also graffiti on the cement column supports. They were put there by workers who built the monument. Needless to say, most people who visit this famous national monument are unaware of the secret room lurking beneath them. Number 13. The Torch Room of the Statue of Liberty so the Statue of Liberty is easily one of the most iconic monuments in the United States, if not the most iconic. Standing proud, torch in hand, this lovely lady was a gift from France in 1886 and was created by sculptor Frederick Augusta Bartoli. The statue stands on Liberty Island in New York Harbor and has gone on to become one of the most recognized symbols worldwide of America's dedication to democracy and freedom. The Statue of Liberty was formerly known as Liberty Enlightening the World, and the enlightening is shown by the massive torch she extends skyward in her hand. But the torch holds more than just the symbolism of enlightenment, it also holds a secret room. Up until 1916, this room was open to the public. Tourists were actually allowed to visit this room, from which they could take in the sweeping views of the city. However, in 1916, German spies exploded a nearby munitions depot, and it not only killed several people and injured hundreds, but it also managed to damage both the statue's arm and torch. This, of course, made it unsafe for people to visit the torch room, so the statue was fixed, but the room was never reopened to the public. Today, the highest point of the statue that people can visit is the crown, and although the crown is pretty high, it's a far cry from the height of the torch. Number 12 the secrets in the Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. The Hoover Dam, it stands 726 feet tall, and it's 660 feet wide at its base, and only 45 feet wide at the top. And with about a million people flocking to see the dam every year, it's a very popular tourist attraction. But few tourists that visit the dam know that the dam is flooded with secrets. For example, there's a pillbox on the ledge near the Hoover Dam that was installed after the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941. 
the outpost was camouflaged by rocks, and although it was only active for a year, the former guard post is still visible with a little searching. The dam also has a secret memorial that was dedicated to a dog. The dog was deemed the dam's mascot. This puppy was a stray that lived at the dam while the workers were building it, but sadly the pup was accidentally run over in 1941. Furthermore, Lake Mead, which was created by the dam, holds a lot of secrets too. So many that Lake Mead is considered by some to be the best freshwater scuba diving site in the United States. At the bottom of Lake Mead are the Hoover Dam train hoppers, a site where trucks used to dump loads of rocks, complete with underwater concrete tunnels. There's the Wishing Well Cove with dramatic wind-worn cliff walls that create dramatic formations, and there are several wrecks lurking at the bottom of Lake Mead, including a PBY-5A Catalina plane that crashed into the lake in 1949, and Wreck Alley with the Southern Cross, which is a large wooden sailboat. Number 11. Vasari's Corridor Vasari's Corridor is a once-secret corridor that connects the Palazzo Vecchio to the Baboli Gardens, which are next to the Pitti Palace. The corridor was commissioned in 1564 by the Grand Duke Cosimo I. The corridor connected his place of work to his home, so he could travel between the two just in case things got dangerous outside, or at the very least to avoid the dirty streets. The corridor runs along the top of the palace and over a bridge. Now, during World War II, the corridor was used to store important works of art to protect them from bombing, and Mussolini had the windows enlarged to please Hitler when he came to visit. Apparently, Hitler liked both the view and the art and ordered that the corridor be spared. Vasari's corridor was the only bridge in Florence spared in the war. Today, the corridor is home to a number of self-portraits by some pretty heavy hitters in the art world, from the Renaissance all the way to today. The corridor is narrow and the art is precious, so visiting the corridor is not something everyone can do. Vasari's corridor is only open to small groups who have been authorized, and these groups are accompanied by an official Uffizi guard. As such, the once secret and now elite corridor is a highly exclusive space that's mostly hidden from public viewing. Number 10. The Lamp Post Police Station in Trafalgar Square Trafalgar Square was designed in the 1830s after the British defeated the French and Spanish in the Battle of Trafalgar, hence the square's name. Today, it's one of the busiest and most vibrant areas in London. There's lots to do and see in Trafalgar Square, including a bizarre and historical little lamp post that most people don't even take notice of. In the southeast corner of Trafalgar Square, there's a tiny little structure that appears to be nothing more than a little odd building with a light on top of it. However, this little-known and seemingly innocuous structure is actually a world record holder. It's the smallest police station in the world. This minuscule police station was built in 1926, and it was built as a way for police to keep an eye on troublesome people. To build this station, they hollowed out a light post and installed a set of very narrow windows that looked out across the main square, so the police inside this little station could secretly watch the crowds from a secret police station in a lamp post. A direct phone line to Scotland Yard was also installed, just in case the police station there required some backup. And even more interesting, the phone line was attached to the light at the top, so whenever the phone was picked up, the light would flash. And the flashing light immediately alerted nearby police in the area to potential and imminent problems. The station is no longer used as a police station, but it is still used. Westminster Council cleaners use the space to store their brooms. Number 9. Statue of Leonardo da Vinci's Secret Hatch The Leonardo da Vinci statue is at Rome's Fumicino Leonardo da Vinci Airport. The statue is bronze with a marble base and is the work of Asen Peikoff, a Bulgarian artist. The statue is about 60 feet tall and it's the most famous work of Peikoff's. Since the statue's unveiling on August 19th of 1960, this statue has seen millions upon millions of people walk by it. But in 2006, a secret was discovered within the statue. The discovery came during a renovation when a worker found a small hatch. The hatch was in the middle of the statue, and buried inside there were two parchments. Both the parchments were in excellent condition. The first is in Latin, and it details the history of the area where the airport now stands. This parchment goes all the way back to ancient times, and the other is a list of people who were there at the unveiling. It's not known whether or not the parchments came from Peikoff himself since he passed away in 1973, and it's also not known why the parchments were placed there. But the odd little hatch and its secret parchments are amusing at the very least, if not historically significant. Number 8. The Cave of Evil Spirits at Niagara Falls 
Niagara Falls is renowned for its beauty. Around 14 million people come to see the falls in their full glory each and every year. The falls are actually made up of a system of three waterfalls, with the biggest between the U.S. and Canadian border called the Horseshoe Falls. But behind the falls lies a secret and ominous cave called the Cave of the Evil Spirits. Caves located in Devil Hole State Park, which is in Niagara County, New York. In fact, it's really just down the road from the masses of people marveling at the falls, although most people who visit the falls know nothing about this cave. This cave is a small limestone cave that's on the other side of the Niagara Gorge, and it's widely believed to be haunted. This is because a group of British soldiers were ambushed and killed there in 1763 by a Seneca tribe. Their bodies were later found floating down the Niagara River. It's estimated that around 100 British soldiers were killed, making this site a scene of a pretty horrible bloodbath. Today, the Cave of Evil Spirits is shrouded in superstition. It's believed that anyone who takes a rock from the cave will be cursed. And the cave is really not that easy to get to. The terrain is rocky and hard to navigate, but the cave and its potentially evil spirits within are there for anyone to see. Anyone brave enough, that is. Number 7. The Hypogeum at the Colosseum The Colosseum is one of the most famous relics from ancient Rome, attracting millions of tourists every year. It's located in Rome, Italy. The Colosseum was once a hub of activity, hosting things like sporting events, staged hunting, and the famous gladiator battles. But while the spectators filled the Colosseum with applause and gladiators battled it out in front of avid fans, there was also a lot going on underneath the Colosseum, unbeknownst to the spectators above. The Hypogeum is an extensive subterranean level located directly under the Colosseum itself. It was a place where machinery was stored, where wild animals were housed, and where the gladiators hung out before their matches. Called an underground labyrinth, the Hypogeum of the Colosseum was used for almost five centuries. It fell to ruin once the stadium fell out of use and it was overgrown with waist-high weeds and fig and caper trees. And the walls and floors are falling into a dank and dark state of disrepair. The Hypogeum wasn't really explored until the late 1800s and early 1900s, and it was completely closed to the public until very recently. Guided tours are now available with a purchase of a special ticket, so anyone who wants to descend into the secret underground world of one of Rome's most iconic structures can now do so. Number 6. Grand Central Terminal Tennis Club Every day, an estimated 750,000 people pass through the elegant Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Commuters on their way to work, tourists who have come to marvel at all the magnificence that is New York City, and even shoppers on a mission. The terminal is a hub of constant activity. However, few who pass through this world-famous terminal are privy to the secrets it holds. One such secret is the Elite Tennis Club. The tennis courts at Grand Central Terminal have existed since the 1960s, when Hungarian immigrant Geza E. Gazdag founded the Vanderbilt Athletic Club. It was located on the third floor of the terminal and featured two clay courts. However, Donald Trump took over the club in 1984 and created an elite and highly exclusive space for the rich and famous. For almost three decades, celebrities and the very wealthy played tennis at the club. This was widely unknown to most people. The club was closed in 2009 and repurposed as a lounge for the employees of the Metro North Railway. The Vanderbilt Tennis Club was moved to a newly constructed fourth floor in 2011. Today, the courts are open to the public, but they're hard to find and very pricey. It'll set you back about $250 per hour to swing a racket on these secret courts. Number 5. The Eiffel Tower's Apartment in total, there are 1,665 steps from the bottom to the top of the tower, but the steps from the second floor to the top are not accessible to the public. However, if you've ever climbed the steps of the Eiffel Tower that are open to the public, then you know firsthand how arduous the climb is. So this next secret might have you scratching your head a little bit. There's a secret apartment at the top of the tower. This apartment was built by the original designer of the tower, Gustav Eiffel. Apparently, building and designing national monuments comes with some added perks, because Gustav was able to build himself his own little private apartment within the third floor of the monument. The apartment itself is nothing garish or lavish. It's most often described as cozy. It's got wooden cabinets, a piano, some wallpaper, and somewhat humble furnishings. Gustav mostly wanted the apartment to experiment, reflect, and entertain. But when others caught wind of the apartment, they wanted to join Gustav atop the monument. Gustav, however, had other plans. He was extremely selective about who he invited to the apartment. 
and like all things exclusive, the fewer people he invited to his apartment, the more people he had asking for invites. The apartment became a highly sought-after place amongst rich Parisians and international celebrities. And it was Gustav's pride and joy, though, and he kept his guest list pretty tight. Gustav even reportedly rejected offers from people to rent it out for the night. He had no interest in turning his secret apartment into an Airbnb. Instead, he only wanted to entertain very few high-profile people, like Thomas Edison. It's believed that Gustav never slept in the apartment himself. In any case, the little abode, which is about a thousand feet up in the air, was at one time the highest apartment in the world. Spectacular views, yes, but one hell of a hike to get there. Number 4. Finder Street Station Secret Ballroom Might be hard to believe that an entire ballroom can be kept a secret. That's exactly the case at Finder Street Station. Now, Finder Street Station is the busiest railway station in Australia, with upwards of 100,000 travelers passing through its doors every day. The ballroom is through a doorway halfway down the north face of the station. The door itself is elegant, with two curved stone arches that are set inside of each other. But the doors never open, and so for most, the doors are just simply passed by. But what's behind the doors? Well, there's a whole wing of space that's no longer used, empty meeting rooms, an empty gymnasium, empty storage spaces, and at the end of the hall, an empty ballroom. The ballroom has been closed to the public for more than 35 years, and it sits on the top floor of the station, abandoned, above all the busy travelers who walk on by underneath, unaware of its presence. The ballroom was closed in 1985, but it was once a Melbourne icon. It was designed by James Fawcett and HPC Ashworth in 1910, and it was originally used as a lecture hall. The space featured a library, a gymnasium, and a men's-only area with a billiard room and a boxing ring and a running track. During the 1950s and the 1960s, the ballroom was widely used as it was a haven for public dances. But when it was closed in 1985, it was more or less forgotten for decades. The Victorian government has put a plan in place to restore and reopen the space. But until then, the ballroom, in all its disrepaired glory, remains relatively unknown. Number 3. Wine Cellars in the Brooklyn Bridge The Brooklyn Bridge was completed in 1883, and since its completion, it served as an essential link between Manhattan and Brooklyn. But where the iconic bridge arches its way across the East River, welcoming tourists and resident New Yorkers alike, there's a secret lurking beneath the bridge that doesn't see nearly as much pedestrian traffic. Below the ramps that lead to the anchorages on both sides of the bridge are secret vaults that once served as wine cellars. The bridge was built with compartments and passageways inside the anchorages, and these compartments were once rented out as a means to help pay off the expense of building the bridge. The vaults were less than ideal for a place of residence. They were dark, consistently cool, and a bit cavernous. Those are hardly sought after living conditions. They are, however, sought after conditions for wine and liquor storage. As such, liquor vendors rented out the vaults for almost four decades after the bridge's completion. The vaults were named after famous French streets and were even decorated in grape and leaf designs. These vaults were closed to liquor storage during Prohibition, but were reopened in 1934. During this time, the vaults weren't just used for liquor and wine storage, they actually hosted elite and private sipping parties. The vaults were taken back by the city after World War II, and today they are closed to the public. They are still used for storing maintenance equipment, though, but needless to say, today's use of the secret vaults is not nearly as fun nor scandalous as the vaults uses of yesteryears. Number 2. The Washington Monument Secrets the Washington Monument was built as a memorial to the beloved George Washington. This monument was completed in 1885, and it was, at one time, the tallest structure in the world from 1884 to 1889. But this highly visited monument is holding a few secrets that aren't really widely available to the public. For example, the aluminum capstone of the monument, which really can't be seen clearly unless you're face to face with it, has inscriptions on every one of its faces. Most of the inscriptions are the names of the people who worked on the monument. But on the east phase, there's a Latin phrase, Leos Deo, which means praise be to God. At the bottom of the monument, there are a very few strange and mysterious items. One of the items is a Bible, which is not that strange since Christianity was very prevalent during that time. There are copies of the U.S. Constitution and Declaration of Independence. There's also a portrait of George Washington, which sort of makes sense since the monument was built for him. There's a map of Washington, D.C., plus one of every U.S. coin from that time. 
and there were small books written in something called diamond type, which was the smallest typeface in the country at that time. And it's not just the monument itself that holds secrets. On the grounds of the Washington Monument is a hidden manhole. Inside this manhole is a 12-foot replica of the monument itself. This little replica is called Benchmark A. Now, Benchmark A, although tiny in comparison to the actual monument, has a pretty big role. It's part of a network of a million control points spread across the United States used by the National Geodetic Survey. These control points are a starting points of any map, and as such, they have to be very accurate, which is why the stable little statue was chosen. Massively important to the surveying circle, but widely forgotten by most people, Benchmark A is one of the most significant and important national monuments, semi-secrets. Number 1. Mount Rushmore's Secret Room Carving out those iconic faces on Mount Rushmore was no easy feat. The original plan was to create a carving of these four men, the men who contributed the most to the foundation, preservation, and expansion of the American Republic, right down to their waists. But as you can see, that never came to fruition. All we have is their heads. The sculptor responsible for chipping away at the mountain until recognizable faces took shape was Gutzon Borglum, and he carved away for five years, from 1934 to 1939. Sadly, he died in 1941, the same year that the funding ran out for the project. So the project never made it waist deep. But that wasn't the only original plan that was abandoned. Apparently, Borglum wanted to carve a giant inscription next to Washington's head. The inscription was going to list the nine most significant events in American history up until that point in time. But when someone pointed out that no one would be able to read it, even if it was enormous, Borglum pivoted and decided to build a chamber instead. The chamber is called the Hall of Records, and the intention was to include an expansion of why these men were so important in it. However, like their wastes, the chamber project was also abandoned, and so now there's an empty room right behind Abraham Lincoln's head. The room's about 75 feet long and 35 feet high, and it's pretty much empty space, save for a few engraved panels. When it comes to secrets in national monuments, the secret room of Mount Rushmore is pretty amazing, which is why it's earned the top spot on this list of 15 amazing secrets hidden in national monuments. I'll see you tomorrow. Watch our obscure playlist for more top 15 videos about the more obscure subjects in our world. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best and most obscure videos.